Hi, welcome back to video number six in the Common Filter Implementation Series. This is the last uh, video. Uh, what I've got uh, displayed on the screen now is, is uh, streaming real-time data from both the Common Filter and the Complementary Filter on the, uh, the IMU, the, the MPU 6050, uh, being run on, uh, by an Arduino. And actually, uh, instead of an Arduino, I've been using the Teensy chips, which uh, are really nice. They they run off the uh, using the Arduino IDE, and it uh, they, they're much faster than a like an Arduino Uno chip, but uh, uh, same code. It's very nice. So if you look at the different uh, screens I have here, on the the top left screen is uh, is the role for both the complementary filter and the common filter. So I'm going to, to shift the roll a little bit and you'll see, see I just bumped it up to six degrees or so. and go on up to 45, maybe or 25 anyway. And then if I drop it back down, uh, so that's the roll, example of roll. Uh, now let me change pitch on the, the one right below that. You'll see I'll go up to 25 degrees or so as well. 25 and then let it back down. So that's roll. The bottom one is yaw, and I'll move the yaw, move it around a little bit, and I'll move it back. So there's the yaw, the yaw axis. Um, this the screen over on the far right, those two plots that are one in purple and one in green, those are showing the common filter residuals. Um, and uh, let's see, I guess I don't have much time to get into that, but it's a it's a way that you can kind of track your performance of your common filter. The two uh, frequency plots in the center there, the purple and the green one, are also uh, looking at the common filter residuals. Um, as, as, the, um, as the bottom plot is down there on the right. So let's get back over to the, uh, the top two left-hand side and look at the, now that it's settled back down, we can kind of look at the the, the role for both the complementary filter and the common filter. Let me talk about the, some of the tuning parameters in a complementary filter versus the common filter and why they're a little different and how you handle them. In the complementary filter, remember we had those two gains and I think it was called K1 gain one and the second variable was called K1 gain two. Um, the, the first parameter, uh, well, together they they should add up to 100%. The first one, which I think we're running at uh, 90 or 99% roughly, is uh, tells you how much of the solution is in uh, how much of the gyro measurement you're including in the the current solution. So it takes 99% uh, of the previous solution plus the gyro measurement coming in. And then it adds that to the accelerometer uh, estimate of roll, which, uh, which remember accelerometers are noisier, but they, they're able to, um, uh, they're not affected by, by a drift where the, where the gyro is. So the, we want a little bit of, of that accelerometer information in there to give us some information about drift and keep it locked in. Um, so that's that's it. Now you can see the the complementary filter there. When I raise pitch a little bit and roll, it, both of them track really well on here. So let's talk a little bit about the common filter. The common filter has two pr tuning parameters as well: the Q matrix, which which in our uh, example here uh, for roll has a element two elements along the diagonal of that matrix. Those are our, our two. Uh, Q tuning parameters. Q uh, tells the common filter how how well we trust the model, uh, the state model that we have. Uh, how what's our confidence in that? The other tuning parameter is that R matrix, or in our case, it's just a single element. So it's it's a uh, a scalar. R tells the common filter how well we trust the measurement coming in, which in this case is accelerometer measurement. So if we raise R, that's like telling the common filter that we, are, we have less confidence in the accuracy of the acceleration coming in, or we wanna weigh that uh, separately. 
So Q and R, in a way, uh, one kind of a simple way you can look at it is they help uh, kind of bound the column and gain, which uh, which actually, in, in, unlike the complementary filter where those two gains are fixed, the column and gain it, it value changes, uh, but they're bounded by the values that you set in there by Q and R. So it's it's more optimal in that sense, but it still has bounds. Uh, what to do? Uh, so uh, let's see what else we can do. One thing I can do is I can uh, I can shake this guy a little bit back and forth. So I'm shaking him back and forth, and we can see right. Uh, so I'm shaking it in the in the roll axis, and you can see the common filter actually uh, reacted more to the, um, the shaking than the complementary filter. But, uh, but then the complement, the common filter kind of converge back to that value of, what is it, 0 0.30 degrees, uh, a slight bit quicker than the, than the complementary. So that tells me that uh, I, still need, I still would have some work to do to fine tune these, these guys. I would, you, want the, you want the filter to recover fast, kind of like what the common did, it recovered a little faster. But then again, you don't want it to be jittery if there's uh, vibration going on with the, say, the quadcopter that you're flying with. So let's try the same thing in the, in the roll axis, I mean pitch axis here. So I'm going to shake it here a little bit here, and we're seeing the same kind of thing. Okay, let go of it. So the uh, the common bounced around a little more than the uh, than the uh, complementary, but they they settled out about the same. So. Uh, What's what's amazing is that the complementary filter, with how simple it is, uh, performs performs very well. But um, if you keep working on the, there's a lot of complexity and, and additional, in a way, capability that you can add to the common filter if you if you keep on adding it. For example, if we were to go to a full nine DOF sensor and start including magnetometer data, uh, we could. Uh, include that in our in our common filter and, and it would be it's like it's all interconnected and the, and the gains would be running dynamically um, so there are different ways that you can do that but uh, anyway interesting so that's a quick overview a quick look at how the the common compares the complementary both are both work great um, and as i believe i mentioned in one of the earlier videos the a general observation is that the faster that you have data coming in, generally the less accurate your your models need to be. So if we have data coming in super, super fast, um, then the complementary filter is probably good enough. As if we have data dropouts or uh, things such as that, uh, a lot of times a, a common filter will, will perform better through some of that. Uh, also, when you start getting more complex by adding uh, more things like a magnetometer and, and such and want, want to solve for other types of parameters the common especially good for that well that wraps it up for video number six thanks for watching